Hello and welcome back to the Lobo Designs channel. My name is Heather Lynn. I'm the owner of Lobo Designs and I'm here today with an Adobe Illustrator tutorial to show you how I created this SVG from this photo. And what I do is I prepare this photo before I bring it into Adobe Illustrator. If you're not familiar with how I edit my photos, I do have a tutorial that goes over all of the steps that I use. I will link that in the description below. But today I'm going to be showing you how I took this photo and created this file with an offset path for my laser to follow for a cutting shape around the engrave. So let's get started with this tutorial. I'm starting out with a 12 by 20 inch artboard in Adobe Illustrator. You don't have to make your artboard the same size. That's just the standard one that I use. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to place the photo on my artboard by hitting Command Shift P or Control Shift P on my keyboard, or you can go up into File, Place, and I'm going to be placing this image on my artboard. I'm gonna click anywhere on my artboard for it to import. It is going to be larger than I need it to be, so I will resize it. Currently, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see what we're doing here. I'm gonna hide my artboard up here just so that we don't see these lines. So Command Shift H or Control Shift H if you're on Windows. And what we're going to be working with is this picture. I'm going to leave it at this size for right now and we'll resize it when we're finished. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to make a copy of this photo. So right now I have it on my artboard. I'm hitting Command C or Control C on my keyboard to make a copy. You can also go up into Edit and pick Copy if you choose. And I'm making an exact copy of this photo. So I'm just going to make a copy of it. Now I'm holding a copy of this. The next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to image trace this photo. So I'm going to go over here in the image trace panel and I'm going to hit trace. If you don't see the image trace panel, you can go up into window, go down to image trace and it will show. I'm going to make sure I have this highlighted and we're going to click the word trace. It's going to trace at 128 on the threshold. That's the default. I normally don't change that unless I need to. I might bump this up a little bit just so we can get it a little bit darker. There are a lot of nodes on this, so it takes a little bit of time for it to edit. I think this next one should be fine. What we're looking for here is we're just looking to be able to create the outline of these little feet. So I'm going to stick with this one and I'll show you how to go from here. So right now we have this image traced. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to go up into the object menu and I'm going to hit expand. The menu that pops up, make sure both of these are highlighted and click OK. Now we have this expanded. We're going to remove the white area. So we're going to hit Y on our keyboard, or you're gonna go over here to the magic wand key or the magic wand tool. You're gonna to click anywhere in the white area one time, and then you're going to hit delete on your keyboard. So now it looks like nothing happened, but what it did is it deleted all of the white space that was traced when we did the image trace piece. So now we have these footprints and we can get rid of the rest of this. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to Command Shift G, a few times, Command Shift G is ungroup. You can also, if you have it grouped, you can also go over here under the quick actions and hit ungroup, or you can right click and go to ungroup. You have to do it a few times though, so I prefer the hotkey. So Command Shift G, I, I said a few times, make sure it's all the way down so ungroup is no longer an option. And what I do here is I make sure that I highlight one foot and I group it. So I can either click group here or I can do Command G. So we're going to group. I'm gonna group this other foot here, group, and now everything else I'm gonna get rid of. So what I do here is I do Command A to select everything. I hold down the Shift key and I deselect the feet, and then I hit Delete on my keyboard. I'm going to take the first foot, I'm gonna go up into Object, Path, Offset Path, and I'm going to make an offset of this foot. I'm going to use a 0.5 inch offset. Remember, these are still very large, so we're going to be resizing them, but not just yet. So I'm going to use a 0.5 inch offset. Joins are rounded. Preview is on so I can see what's going on over here. I'm going to click OK. And what I do here is I go back, I make sure that I have this entire thing selected, including the original outline. I'm going to Unite over here in Pathfinder. I'm going to right click and release the compound path on this and then I'm going to unite it once more. Now I don't like the outside edges of this, so I'm also going to go through showing you how to smooth these edges out. Because of how jagged the feet traced, all the edges are a little bit rough. So if you have this ready and you wanna smooth your edges out, you can go up into object, you can go down to path, and you can go to simplify. You can bring this as far down as you want. I'm gonna go as far down as I possibly can with these because I don't need it to be jagged. 
and that looks like it's going to be fine. Now, while I have this selected, I'm going to change it from fill to stroke by hitting shift X. You can also hit this little arrow over here next to the color boxes to swap them, but shift X is super easy. And while I have this selected, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn it into a red stroke. Now, we're gonna do this one more time for that foot, that whole entire process once more. So we're going to select this foot, we're gonna go into Object, Path, Offset Path, your defaults from last time will store, so you'll just need to click OK. Now you're going to select everything on these feet, you're going to Unite, release your compound path, unite it once more, and then you're gonna go up into Object, Path, Simplify Path, and drop this all the way down to the bottom. Now I'm still going to wanna to smooth these out a little bit more and I'll show you how to do that as well. But I'm going to show you how to switch this over to a red fill quickly by using the eyedropper tool. So while you have this selected, you can hit I on your keyboard or you can go over here to the eyedropper tool on your menu and you can click on this red outline and it will match it to a red outline on this red foot. I'm going to edit this a little bit more, but I'm not going to edit it until we bring that photo back. So right now we're gonna bring the photo back by hitting Command B and then hit Command B once more. That's two copies of the photo. And the reason that we're doing that is because we need one copy for each footprint. So right now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth out these lines a little bit more. So I'm gonna zoom in. We're gonna be using the pencil tool for this. I'm gonna select this red line. I'm gonna to go to the pencil tool, which is N as in Nancy on your keyboard, or it is this tool right here. Looks like a pencil. If you can't see it, right click on this. You're probably seeing the paintbrush or the blob brush instead. It might be hidden. So you wanna make sure you have the pencil tool selected, like I said, N on your keyboard. And what happens with the pencil tool is you can just redraw these lines. You just wanna make sure that when you're starting and ending that you are starting and ending on the same path that you're redrawing. So I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna do a quick little swoop along the edge here, making sure I end it right there on the same line. And then I'm gonna do this a little bit more all the way around the edge here. And we can change that a little bit more. You can play with this as much as you'd like. This is just for the tutorial. So I'm gonna fix this edge over here as well. Not that one. If you mess up anything, you can do Command Z to undo. Go around these little feet. There we go. I could do this all day long with these tweaks. I won't make you watch this any further though. You get the idea. So I'm gonna fix this one up here a little bit more. And that looks good. I don't really like this little toe thing happening. Again, as much as you'd like to play with this, go right ahead. Now I'm gonna go over here, fix this one. It's not as much of a mess as the other one. You wanna make sure that you hop over to this one though. So you're gonna to go to the selection tool, which is V on your keyboard, or it's this arrow up at the top. You're gonna to make sure you have the red line selected. Again, back to your pencil tool and on your keyboard, redrawing this little line here. And maybe just go over this one a little bit more and we'll round this out. So this is just gonna be what we're using for the test, and that looks good. So here is the next step. Pay attention to this. Oh, I don't really like this line. One second. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna do this process twice, one for each footprint. Like I said, we have two copies of this photo, so you're going to take this red outline, you're going to make a copy, Command-C, Control-C, or Edit Copy. You're going to select the red line along with the top photo, so you're just gonna hold down your Shift key, make sure you have the photo selected and the red line selected together. You're going to make a clipping mask. You can either right click and do make clipping mask or you can hit command or control seven on your keyboard to make the clipping mask. It doesn't look like anything happened because again, we still have a copy of the photo behind it for that other footprint. But what you're gonna do right now is you're going to do command F as in front and you're gonna bring that red line back. One more time on this side, grab the red line also grab the photo by holding down the shift key so that you have both of these selected. You're going to make a clipping mask. Again, Command-7 or Control-7 or right click, make clipping mask. And then you're going to hit Command-F as in front to bring that outline back. And now the last step for making these feet laserable is that you wanna make sure that you rasterize the clipping masks that you just created because the laser will not recognize that you've just trimmed out that photo until you rasterize it. So you're going to take the first foot over here, you're going to go up into the object menu and go down to rasterize. 
Make sure you're at grayscale, resolution high, everything else should look the same as my screen. Click OK. And then you're going to do the same once more over here. Click just the foot, not the red outline. Go up into object, rasterize, same thing here. Click OK. And now you have your baby feet that you can rotate as needed. You can actually merge them together if you want, shrink them down. Again, remember that right now these are about 12 inches in height, so you wanna make sure that you resize them accordingly. But now you have your baby feet SVG that you can use for whatever you need it for on your project. When you're exporting, don't forget you wanna do file save as or command shift S as in save. You're going to go, the format down here should be SVG. You're gonna name your SVG up at the top. I'll name this baby footprints too, since we already have a regular one. And on this screen, you want to make sure that you have SVG 1.0 highlighted for the profile. You want to make sure that you have decimal places set to three and you want to make sure or three or more. And you want to make sure that responsive is not checked. And then you'll just click OK and it will be exported into your design software. In Lightburn, when you import these, these come in as an image. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. You're going to go into Command I for import. And I just made this one, I believe. Yep, there we go. So right now we have the line up top here, and then you have your image. So you can resize it in Lightburn if you want to, or you can resize it in Adobe Illustrator if you want to. You can resize this whole thing down and engrave it from there. If you'll see up here at the top, these come in as images. These don't come in as line or fill. The image file settings that I use are 228. Sometimes I use 330. It really just depends on the photo. So you'll need to tweak that for your own machine. But again, once you have this exported as an SVG and you have all of those steps followed, everything is rasterized, this will pull in just like it needs to be either into the GFUI or into Lightburn. And that concludes this tutorial. As always, feel free to join us in the GlowCreate group on Facebook for additional tips and tricks on how to use Procreate and Adobe Illustrator beyond the screen to turn your digital artwork into physical products. If you enjoyed this video and would like to be notified of future tutorials, please hit the like button and subscribe below. Until next time, this is Heather Lynn of Lobo Design signing off. I'll holla at you later.